finding an eclectic mix of stock means putting in the miles. So the boys are travelling the length of Wales into rural Somerset, where Drew has lined up a visit to a place he's got to know rather well. Off to see Chris's crackers. Now, this is somewhere I have stopped. I think this must be my third, fourth or fifth stop. No, we're going down south. Yeah, we might head a lot lately, actually. I always end up driving past this place, but I thought, you know, you can't ever not call in. Unless you've been 30 times, you haven't got anything, then, not, then don't bother. But until that point, keep going. I still call into antique shops for maybe 10 or more years where I've never actually bought anything, just in the off chance. Somerset is a county famous for its cheese and cider, but the boys are here for a different kind of treat. Just outside the coastal town of Minehead is Chris's Crackers Junk Shop, a sprawling three-acre emporium that's been selling everything from antiques to architectural salvage for over 30 years. The manager is Pete Marshall. We're a salvage yard, we're a reclamation yard, a bit of brocant, we buy and sell anything. We enjoy what we do. Drew has been in, in the past, on the odd occasion. I'm sure if he looks around, he can find something. So they've got loads, oh. looks rammed. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, gentlemen. Pete. Pete. How are we doing? Nice to meet you. Nice, nice to see meet you. you. Um, I've passed her a few times. I've never actually met the, the main man. So, yeah. Can we, we have the today? tour, please? I don't want to go too far, because there's something already that's catching my attention, which is that. That's a nice old light. I'll have the dust on it for you. <laughs> you purposely not cleaned yeah, it for me. Absolutely. That's a belt. I'm not even in the building. And there's this fantastic industrial lamp. It's just got it all. This unusually large mid-century industrial ceiling light features an aged oxidised hook, a vitreous enamelled steel rim and a much sought-after holofane glass shade. The green patina on the light's housing is known as verdigris, and is formed when copper is exposed to the elements over a long period of time. Rewired and safety tested, it could be worth around 500 pounds. What are you asking for that dirty, manky old chicken shed lamp? I'd like a couple of hundred for that one. Do you know, I looked at it and I thought, that's 150 quid. Right. Do you want to meet in the middle, say messing about 175, or are you stuck on 200? We could have a deal. Sure? Yeah. 175. 175. We so, haven't even got in yet. I know. So, there you go. That's, that's the close. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. There is money to be made there. That is a whopper. That's a really cool thing. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You like that one? I have got exactly the same one hanging in my kitchen. For sale? It is for sale. Right. We're 10, 15 foot inside the shop. I look up and there's a Kinnock ammunition mirror. Now, I've had a few of these in the past. And I currently have the last one I bought in my kitchen. And it's so beautifully made that I can't resist another one. And they do not grow on trees, these. They're not rare, they're scarce. I think you're going to have to make me an offer on that one. 900. I was looking for a grand on it. Well, we're not very far apart. Can we get it down? Certainly. Yeah? So you need a ladder. Do you want to go? You're going to climb up the rads. Look at him go. That might be a bit heavy, so you're going to take it? Yeah. OK. So look at the back while you've got it. I'll put it on that, that bench there. Ah, oh, there you go. That's dead right. Yeah. That's bang on. Nice. Well, this is really nice and clear. I really like it. I'll give you a £1,000 for it. Brilliant. Happy? Happy. 1000 quid for that. That's fine. Now I own two of them. I'll sell them as a pair, which is way more valuable, way more desirable as a pair. Is that a contender? such a simple thing and it's so untouched you know but all the glass oh that piece there right that piece has been changed but it's still in what's called two ounce very very thin glass the stuff above is all the original that's a shame but it ages it very very nicely into the sort of late 1870s early 1880s there's a cracking, very simple sort of provincial pine glazed bookcase on cupboard. And what I like about it particularly is it's very tall and thin, sort of fit in a lot of places. How badly do you want to get rid of it? It's got to be 250. I'm not going to argue with you. I'll give you 250 quid for it. That's right. It. Yeah? Sold. Happy days. There's about 250 to 300 quid left in it. So just need marketing correctly, cleaning correctly, then it will go. 
That chair there, I mean, that's really interesting. You've got a lot of these. Can I get round and have a look at that? That's the original paint on it as well. One thing I'm seeing loads of in here are comeback chairs, comeback Windsors, smokers' bows, armchairs, stick backs. He's got a bit of a thing for them. There must be two dozen in here, but amongst them, there's some really unusual variants. So let's buy some really simple, common vernacular furniture. We normally get about 250 for a chair like that. We'll 200 quid buy it. That is all the money I can spend. Yeah, we can do that. Thank you, mate. The Windsor chair originated in the English town of the same name in around 1710. There are many variants, but they all feature backs and sides made from multiple thin turned spindles that are attached to a solid sculptured seat with a slightly reclining back and splayed legs. This example could be worth around £350. With one Windsor bagged, Drew's next sitting target is a smoker's bow armchair, which takes its name from the low and curved back. Where would you like to be on that one? 100 quid. Go on, and we're having a good day. Lovely. Let's keep going. The last of the chairs to catch Drew's eye is a particularly fine comb-backed Windsor, which combines design elements of the two other versions. 200 quid. 220? 200 quid. 200 quid. Thank you very much. We got there in the end, didn't we? <laughs> it's going to be a long day. <laughs> With nothing more than a light clean, this one could be worth around £500. We're doing well, aren't we? Yeah, yeah we, we are. We're in a, the, we bought something in every we, room so far. Have we got any more rooms? Absolutely. <laughs> Follow me. Which way? That way. <laughs> Where do you get that from? Bought it on eBay for a hundred quid. You're joking. I'm not joking. An antique, antique sign. I couldn't sell that one, Drew. I couldn't sell it. Come on. I can't sell it. Everything's for sale. I've never seen an antique, antique sign. It's a genuine antique now. It's over a hundred years old. It's incredibly unusual. Oh, it's tricky. Because I probably wouldn't sell it. And that's, there's no point in doing that. There's no point in having an antique sign that you don't sell, is there? I'm really torn. I don't know what to do. This hand-painted, vitreous, enameled antique shop sign was probably made just before World War I. Much sought after, its value to the trade could be as high as £1,500. Bid me. Drew Pritchard is on a spending spree at a huge antique shop and salvage yard in Somerset. So, happy days. Brilliant. Where his eye has been drawn to a unique weathered antique sign that's over 100 years old. £500. Keep it. It's a good offer. Mm. But it's not quite good enough. You can have them for 550 No. <laughs> No. <laughs> I mean, why said I've got to stand my ground? Have you? Well, you've stood your ground. You've done well, but it's 500 quid. You can have it for 500 quid. Thank you very much. Marvellous. Get the ladders out. Someone's going to have to give me a shed load of cash for that. And do you know what? Somebody will. So there'll be a very wealthy antique dealer somewhere in California or something like that who will buy it. God, look at all this stuff. Wow. Where on earth did you get that from? The marble base and the urn come from a local manor house. My God. It is a fossil marble base for either column or a statue. But whatever it is, it's a fantastic architectural element. This is an exciting thing. This colourful column plinth is made of prized fossil marble, which was used in many of the Victorian's grandest buildings. 
Produced in the 19th century and measuring over two feet in diameter, this is an English architectural element of the highest quality and could be worth around £1,200. Hang on, hang on. How much is it? Don't laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's been there since Jesus was a lad. 350 If you'll get it on a pallet for us, stick it on the van, I'll give you 300 quid for it. Sold. Thank you very much. You made so my day. glad you got a forklift. <laughs> 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 that's a great find. It's exceptional in size and colour and condition and the, the patina that it has on it. Architectural Antiques was my first love. That is an excellent piece, a really exciting architectural antique. Heading into one of Pete's storage sheds that's ordinarily off limits to the public, Drew's on the scent of yet another hidden gem. Oh, hello, Pete. Yeah? Tell me about this barrel, half barrel thing. Cider press barrel for collecting the juice. You can get that out, I'd be interested. We can get that out, Drew. Right at the back. There's a coopered and what looks like half a barrel in its part of a cider press. 19th century as well. It's not a late one, it's an early one. That takes a long time for oak to turn that colour. I had one similar and I sold it for £1,400. That one is better. If you've got a big old country house, a great big fireplace, you want a log basket that's a statement piece, that's it. Has it been cut? No, no that's not been cut. how it should be. Yeah? Absolutely. How much was it? One fifty. I'll take that. Thank you very much. That's a that's a good lump. It's a nice thing, that. Lovely, mate. I'm over the moon with that. Yeah, pleased with that. And you're in Somerset, so you've got to have something cider related. Like a hangover. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Okay. I think we're done. I've been here several times, and I've never bought anything. <laughs> so today was a bit of a shocker when I've ended up buying a ton of stuff. I've got that great big industrial light. And then to go into the next room and buy another Kinnick mirror. Bought a load of chairs. I can double my money on every single chair there. That wonderful antique enamel sign to get that as well. Fantastic. The cider barrel is just great. I'm hoping that when we put it into a warmer environment, it'll start to smell of cider. <laughs> I think my favorite thing is the marble architectural element. There's a little bit of magic on that one. And I think it will probably fetch in excess of a thousand pounds fairly easily. Yeah, I had a good day. I hope Drew's had a good day. They filled the van, which is always nice to see. Happy with all the prices from today. As long as Drew's happy, we're happy. Good day. We'd have Drew back, definitely. Sorted? Yeah, excellent little haul. <laughs> Not bad at all. Yeah. Pete, thank you, mate. No problem. It proves you should always take a little bit more time. Nice <laughs> to have you both here. You all look right. after yourself. See you take later. Care. See you. Bye bye. So there you go, that's sort of the old adage you should always, always call in because you do never know. Walk in today, I can't believe, I don't know how many times, what did I buy? Side Seven, press. eight things. Sorts, yeah. The glazed bookcase, all the chairs, the antique sign, the mirror. I can't even remember. I hope I remembered, otherwise it hasn't gone in the back. <laughs> Back at the warehouse, Rebecca's waiting to see what delights Drew managed to uncover in the West Country. You right? Hello, hello. How are we doing? Good trip to the West Country. It was really good, actually. We went to Chris's Crackers. It's Chris Crackers? No, it's a gentleman called Pete now who runs it. But, yeah, we did very well there. We got this. Apparently, it crushed the apples, and that's where it drained into. Oh, apparently. OK. Drew thought... Log basket. But isn't that nice? Well, that makes a change. He's come back with something that shouldn't go on the fire. Yeah. How much did you pay for it? That was 150 150 so Good price, I think. £150 for an epic cider barrel come log basket. There's a good profit there. A nice profit and a wonderful item. Enamel sign. Enamel sign. Not Set too unusual, it. but it says... Oh. And... Antiques on it. I have never seen one that says antiques, ever. Oh, it's fantastic. Antiques? Yeah. Pete got it off eBay for £100. He did? Yeah. How much did he sell it for? 500 That's fab. That's an antique dealer's dream. I had to laugh. T said Pete did not want to part with this sign. Well, the word not is not in Drew's vocabulary. If it's not nailed down, He'll put a bid in. And he also bought... Oh! Shotgun cartridges. He's 
bought one of these before. And there's big money in shooting, isn't there? Yeah, it was a thousand pounds. If that matches Drew's other one, oh, you'd be talking about six, eight thousand pounds. Right, I shall put this somewhere oh, safe. Oh, carefully, carefully, carefully. <laughs> wow. If somebody said to me, are you impressed? I'm up there at the top of the barometer of being impressed. So, Chris's Crackers junk shop, in my mind, this isn't junk that Drew's come back with. This is quality, fantastic items. Now that Drew has a pair of Kynock mirrors, Rebecca's keen to find out a bit more about them. This is quite interesting. This is the mirror that Drew bought from Chris Crackers for £1,000. And this is an identical one that Drew bought back in 2014 for £800. These mirrors were produced between 1900 and 1910 by the Kynuck Company. And they were given to their prestigious retailers as promotional items. George Kynock began his Birmingham-based company in 1862, manufacturing bullets and smokeless gunpowder. And he eventually went on to supply the British Army for all its conflicts from the Boer War right the way through to the Falklands. As far as I can find out, there's only been five of these mirrors on the open market since 1998. And those prices have ranged from 1,800 to 5,600. But in the antique business, having a pair is a good thing and Drew will be looking upwards of £6,000, which goes to show good things happen to those.
bang on. Nice. Well, this is really nice and clear. I really like it. I'll give you a thousand pounds for it. Brilliant. Happy? Happy. Thousand quid for that. That's fine. Now I own two of them. I'll sell them as a pair, which is way more valuable, way more desirable as a pair. Is that a contender? Such a simple thing. And it's so untouched, you know? But all the glass... Oh, that piece there. Right. That piece has been changed. But it's still in what's called two ounce. Very, very thin glass. The stuff above is all the original. That's a shame. But it ages it very, very nicely into the sort of late 1870s, early 1880s. There's a cracking, very simple sort of provincial pine glazed bookcase on cupboard. And what I like about it particularly is it's very tall and thin, sort of fit in a lot of places. How badly do you want to get rid of it? It's got to be 250. I'm not going to argue with you. I'll give you 250 quid for it. That's right. It. Yeah? Sold. Happy days. There's about 250 to 300 quid left in it. So just needs marketing correctly, cleaning correctly, then it will go. That chair there, I mean, that's really interesting. You've got a lot of these. Can I get round and have a look at that? That's the original paint on it as well. One thing I'm seeing loads of in here are comb-back chairs, comb-back Windsors, smokers' bows, armchairs, stick-backs. He's got a bit of a thing for them. There must be two dozen in here. But amongst them, there's some really unusual variants. So let's buy some really simple common vernacular furniture. Mm -hmm.